Hello and welcome to our last show before Christmas. What does that mean? Well, essentially it means, have you seen this man? Reports say that he's porky, a pagan, and uh, prefers to break into a home using the chimney. So if you have seen the owner of this hat, please phone your local neighborhood watch as soon as possible. He is wanted for popping into roughly three billion homes in an evening. This week on Go Open, the only open source technology show in the world ever, in the history of the word ever, which is quite long. Uh, we're going on a hemispherical trip, which is a trip kind of like that. Uh, it goes from Brazil, home of the nuts, our festive, uh, to Bombay, the place where you two can buy a cricket match anytime you have the correct number of dollars. We'll also be finding out about the games that smart people play. I think that's more woo as opposed to mmm. And of course, our competition, where you can win cool gadgets from people like LG, which is short for LG, and HP, uh, or some lovely clothes from Soviet. Open source software exists as a result of the combined efforts of millions of computer programmers, users, and software vendors from around the world. They share their intellectual property freely, and they believe that software should cost nothing and should enrich the lives of users. Open source software is the alternative and biggest challenger to closed source or proprietary software. It generally costs the user nothing. It can be distributed freely to anyone. Download it, use it, modify it, and give it away. It's a whole new world. Open source is the future of computing. So, how is open source changing the lives of those people who live in those countries that are named developing? Um, well, from Brazil to South Africa, that's home of the nuts. South Africa, home of the... Well, we're also nuts. To Calcutta, spicy nuts. And mainland China, which is basically the south of Johannesburg. Everyone in, in that part of the world is saying, yes, yes, goodness, yes, ooh, yes, yes, wow, ooh, yes, to open source. And here's why. Open source is taking over the world, especially the developing world, from Brazil in South America, to our own shores, to India and China, creating an art imaginatively called the Southern Smile. We have many problems in common, and open source is one way for us to share our resources, especially that most valuable commodity of all, intellectual capital, brain power. Developing countries are now collaborating more and more, and open source is not only part of the share and share alike philosophy, but also a major driving force. If we are able to combine our talents, then the amount of investment that we put in our research and development activities uh, the returns on that are much higher. Nsantla Mabaso has been working on the CSIR's open source initiative for several years, examining the introduction of open source to government and parastatal. They have tied up with similar organizations in southern small countries to overcome common problems. The cost argument diminishes the whole debate. It's a bit like arguing whether it's more expensive to have apartheid or not, and what is the cost of freedom. Uh, in reality, freedom should be free of charge, but it may come at a cost, yet it's still worth it. In India, an experiment to test how well children from underprivileged areas respond to new technology has resulted in an exciting project here in South Africa. Professor Sugata Mitra of NEET, he started a project called The Hole in the Wall. And there he put a computer system in a hole, in a wall next to a slum, right next to where he was working. And he learned that very soon, they, they taught themselves the basics of a computer. So we have replicated that, that project in South Africa. The Digital Doorway is an initiative between the CSR and the private and the public sector. The concept is minimally invasive education. And that term basically implies that there's no teacher. We put down equipment and the users from the community come and they teach themselves how to use a computer just by exploring and playing around with the applications. They try different things and they learn at their own pace. And that way we hope to increase the computer literacy skills in South Africa. Sam is a young man from Mamelodi near Pretoria. Both his parents are dead, and he has been forced to leave school to support himself by selling newspapers. But Sam has not given up on his education, and thanks to the digital doorway, he can pursue a newfound interest, computing. I learn even if I don't go to school. I learn everything. Like the Indian hole in the wall, the digital doorway is a robust computer built to survive continuous hard usage. 
It is running the open source Linux operating system with educational and office programs. It is also connected to the internet. And what's your favorite website? My favorite website is from Mendoza. <laughs> oh, Mendoza. <website. laughs> of all the southern small countries, India is the one we have the most in common with. And there's certainly a lot that we can learn from each other. Taking their lead in the call center arena, we're starting to think globally and act locally. At the HPI community in rural Limpopo, local people are involved in a pilot project to establish a call center, a phone-in help desk for hire. They use open source software written for the task. We're looking at doing the support for the new 441 product, which is, which is worldwide. So we'd have people phoning here from Australia, from New Zealand, wherever in the world, Norway, and so on, we'll do the support for them. South Africa has been recognized as a place where, and it's not because of cheaper labor or anything like that, it's just a place where we've got the technology, we've got the infrastructure, we've got everything here. And now they've realized that because of our timelines, we can compete with the rest of the world. The Southern Smile Initiative has support from the government, and open source is making everybody sit up and take notice, not least of all for the opportunities it is presenting. Well, look, in South Africa, there must be an ability to, to develop our so a local software industry. But as long as we're operating on the basis of proprietary software, it's going to limit the ability for us to, to free up the potential. We can build up local industries. We can be proudly South African. We can support that campaign. John Mad Dog Hall is our international guest. He's the executive director of Linux International, which promotes Linux internationally. <laughs> Bit of a twist in the end there. Mark Chase hooked up with him via video conference. How technological. Welcome to uh, Go Open, the world's uh, first show uh, dealing with open source technology and methodology. Now, first up, let's talk about free versus open. I think the real problem there is that people are only concentrating on the traditional uh, ways of thinking about software. Now, what people really want, in our estimation, is really service. And that brings us back to having the bulk of software being able to be available over the net. And then you pay your money to have it tailored exactly to what your needs are. If you get software for free, then how does the development of that software get paid for. There are people who say, well, I'm a consultant or I'm working for a large company and the fact that I write this free software gives me recognition inside of the programming community and perhaps somebody will hire me to do a job. What are the hidden costs associated with proprietary software? What happens if a computer company goes out of business and it's that company's email system that you're using to run your government? Can you maintain that yourselves without the source code of that, of that email system. And if people say that, well, that's why I pick a large company like Microsoft to be able to run my company or buy my software from because they're a large company, well, then I can answer back and I can say Wang or Prime or Data General or Digital Equipment Corporation or Compact, which were all large companies in their time, but which no longer exist. A lot of end users who haven't come across Linux or perhaps have heard about it, they don't really quite understand that it could be quite easy to use. How would you respond to that? Well, I would suggest that they simply take a little time out and try it, um, either by perhaps coming to an event like Linux World and taking a look at it, or they could perhaps visit a university or ask for some consulting firm to come in and present them a presentation on what Linux is like. Today, Linux is shipping on about one-third of all the server systems that are shipping. Uh, another third is proprietary and commercial Unix systems, and another third is Microsoft uh, products of different types. The, today, it's used on most of the supercomputers which are being developed, and quite a few of them which are already in use. This coming December, there will be a supercomputer of 10,000 processors, which will be using Linux to help predict the weather as part of NASA's uh, ongoing studies. 